How's it going guys? We have a medium difficulty question for ENT for step one and two. Okay, I'll just hop through some important points you need to know for this and not waste our time. Before we get started, please subscribe my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So 28 year old man, five year history, progressively worsening renal function. He has a one year history of decreased ability to hear in his left ear. The Rene or Ryan test shows air conduction greater than bone conduction in the left ear. The Weber test or Weber test shows lateralization to the contralateral ear to the right ear. Question what's the most likely explanation for these findings? So these tests for hearing loss, you need to know that the Rene or the Ryan test is going to show air conduction greater than bone conduction, both in no pathology whatsoever. You have no problem listening to this clip right now. Okay, well, you're going to have air conduction greater than bone conduction, as well as you will have this finding in neurosensory hearing loss. If bone conduction greater than air conduction, that's conductive hearing loss. Okay, the Weber slash Weber test, all you need to know is that it's going to lateralize. That means which side is louder. It's going to lateralize to the contralateral ear in neurosensory hearing loss, and it's gonna to go to the ipsilateral ear in conductive hearing loss. So in this patient, he clearly can't hear out of his left ear. So we have the air conduction greater than bone conduction. We say, well, he clearly isn't normal. That sounds like neurosensory so far. We do the Weber test or Weber test, and it lateralizes, it's louder in the contralateral ear, in his right ear. So we say, that's consistent with neurosensory hearing loss and we make note of his declining renal function. So let's just hop to the answer choices here. Uh, what's the most likely explanation for these findings? Let's go backwards. Choice E, X-linked disorder is the correct answer. Okay, this is Alport syndrome. This is mutation in type four collagen. Now, there's been some debate whether OMG is this X-linked recessive, X-linked dominant. I can tell you, there's a question on one of the offline NBME exams for step one, it's either NBME 18 or 19 where they say X-linked recessive disorder in the stem, and the answer is Alport syndrome, okay? So this is a mutation in type 4 collagen, and it's going to be an eye and or ear problem. You have collagen 4 in the eye and ear. It's going to be an eye and or ear problem with hematuria or just worsening renal function. That's all you need to know. It's going to be a male, it can be a kid, it can be an adult, doesn't matter. Don't confuse Alport syndrome with good pasture syndrome, which is choice A, wrong fucking answer, which is antibodies against type 4 collagen or GBM, glomerular basin membrane. So good pasture syndrome is going to be a male 20s to 40s with hemoptysis hematuria. 234, 234. The good pasture is marching in the field. 234. Type 2 hypersensitivity against the alpha 3 chains of type 4 collagen. Don't confuse this with mutation in type 4 collagen, which is Alport syndrome, as I just fucking said. Choice B, cholesteatoma, fancy diagnosis, pretty much non-existent yieldness. I think I've seen this once on one of the neuroforms for TCK for the clinical mastery series. You just need to know this is a squamous uh, cell proliferation uh, within the middle ear usually. It can be idiopathic familial. It can also be precipitated by chronic infections. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, serous otitis media. I'll come back to NF2 in a second. Choice D, serous otitis media, aka otitis media with effusion. You need to know is benign and you don't treat it. This is going to be a stem on family medicine where they tell you that a kid had either one or two recent ear infections, was treated successfully, and now comes, up, comes in for a follow-up, and there is fluid visualized behind the tympanic membrane. He's afebrile, completely normal, asymptomatic. They just say there's fluid behind the tympanic membrane. And the diagnosis is just serous otitis media, aka otitis media with effusion, and you don't treat it. It usually self-resolves within 48 weeks, okay? Now, NF2, obviously, we could do a long fucking discussion on, you know, the phacomatoses, the neurocutaneous disorders, NF1, NF2, VHL, TSC, Serge Weber. But NF2 is going to be classically bilateral acoustic schwannomas, I've seen this assessed where, and and of course, it's not going to be bilateral at the same time, okay? So there's a question I've seen where they said a guy had a schwannoma removed in his left ear five years ago, and now he's got Rene and Weber findings. They do it similar, similar to this question where they give you the findings. Now he's got what is consistent with 
neurosensory hearing loss in his right ear, the contralateral ear, the assumption being, well, he had a schwannoma five years ago in the left ear, he probably has a schwannoma now in the right ear, and the answer was NF2 to that question, okay? I mean, not dramatic, but that's how it can be assessed in USMLA. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.